Fantastic. We should be live. And we have a model between uh, offline and online here. -ish. So we have a class on premise at UC Berkeley. And, uh, and then we do the air, air meet uh, remotely. Thank you so much for taking the time here. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here in front of your classroom and uh, you know, excited to, to meet everyone here. So thanks for the opportunity. So uh, um, backstage, we chatted about uh, the, uh, the Berkeley times, right? So Berkeley kickoffs uh, officially 10 minutes into the, into the actual starting class. So 6.30 starts the class, but 6.40 is actually when we officially will be starting. And uh, I'm pretty confident that right now Manan and Tim are setting up uh, the camps. Uh, they were right now on premise. Let me see here if I can invite them back on stage, actually. So we have a couple of more minutes, and then we do an official introduction. I, okay, awesome. Are you able to see us? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why. Okay, um, I mean, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Just I'm saying, me. just not not sure why we are having. A, I don't I don't see you in the in as an admin mode. Uh, so it's good that you raised uh, you raised hands uh, in in the tool, man, and so I can I can put you I can call you on stage. Yeah, we should be able to see the class in person. All right, you guys can all wave. <laughs> awesome. Cool, so there we have it. <laughs> Great. Hi. So we have a mix of the uh, Hirish, uh, yeah, overall 55 to 60 students. We have uh, 10 to 11 teams grouped uh, of five. The teams are um, have a diverse, a diverse background in uh, engineering, uh, design, business. That's kind of the uh, of how we we put the teams together, right? And then in May, the class is going to present in front of a, a crowd of investors, of Silicon Valley investors, and be presenting what they did in five, six months uh, in, a, in a course at Berkeley. From zero to presenting in five months. Not bad. That's awesome. Very cool. We need to be part of this class. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Ideas. That's, that's that's what motivates me when uh, when I kind of put the class together, right? It's like, okay, what is it that I would have wanted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So it looks like we have around one more minute before Berkeley time ends. <laughs> Yeah, even online we don't have too many uh, folks today. I don't know what's what's uh, going on. Yeah, not sure. 
I mean, everybody should have the link to, to AirMeet, right? Should I share it again and on Slack? Yes. Why don't we go ahead and do that? And I'll just put another reminder. In general or? Uh, yeah, general. All right, so it's about 6.40. Um, I think I wanted to actually make one quick announcement before we started class, if that's OK. Yeah. All right. So hey, everyone. Um, got a mic today, so this is going to be good. Um, but yeah, welcome to our next session of class. And one of the things you might be wondering is, you know, are the mentors in person or virtual? So the mentors will all be virtual. Um, and the way we're going to do this is through AirMeet. Uh, one person from all the teams in person will join the AirMeet in one of the startup tables. And then the lecture or sorry, the mentor will join that startup table and you'll be able to work with them. So yeah, that's how it's gonna happen. And we're also having Tommaso as well as Harish today um, on the air meet. Awesome. Oh, great. Uh, thank you so much, Manon. Thank you so much, Timothy. And actually, Harish, thank you so much for your time. I know you have uh, been uh, traveling <laughs> last week in Saudi Arabia, right now in Mexico. Next week, you told me, somewhere on the East Coast, right? Uh, who is Harish, dear class? I have the great pleasure to have uh, today here a um, serial entrepreneur, uh, but not in a, a random space, but uh, in the space of metaverse. Uh, Harish is uh, CEO and, and founder of uh, Super World, right? And backstage, we had uh, a quick chat, right? And we were say, both sharing the same sentence saying, hey, what would we have wanted as a student, right? And uh, metaverse and entrepreneurship is definitely not theoretical, but it's practical, right? That's the reason what motivates uh, me, what motivates us is uh, to bring the best people to the class, right? And learn really firsthand lessons learned, right? On the current topic of metaverse, um, a founder of uh, one of the most renowned current metaverses and uh Hirish, i'm really curious to hear um what you want to share today with the class right um just real quick also dear class before i i hand over the word to to Hirish. um Hirish, the last two three classes um three four weeks the class is in the face right now as i shared already with you but i want to just bring it up again for the class right we were assessing of building a startup through ideation and team formation, right? So who is the right team? What's the team components? What's the team dynamic, right? And we all know, I keep on sharing it every single class, dear class, right? This is a fluent process, right? So it's always an ongoing thing, right? So teams is, a, is an ongoing story, right? There are hypes and downs in building teams, right? Ideation, finding ideas, it's an ongoing story. You think you have an idea, but you keep actually refining initial thoughts or you keep pivoting, right? And so today, firsthand, Hirish will be sharing with us, first of all, well, what is Super World? What are you guys doing, right? And then breaking down based on the topic of, of, of uh, how did you come up with this idea, Hirish, right? What, was the, what were the learnings, right? Maybe what were the obstacles, right? What did you, what did you how did you overcome them, right? And well, without further ado, uh, the uh, I was about to say the stage is yours, but this the screen is yours, right? And uh, thank you so much for your time, Irish. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's a it's a real pleasure to to be here. Um, really love Berkeley, and uh, we've had a number of um, people on the Super Bowl team uh, from Berkeley. So uh, it's it's an honor to be in front of the class, and uh, you know, love to hear. Um, hear from you guys as well and get to know you. Um, so let me let me start by, uh, um, you know, kind of uh, giving you 
uh, just a high level, like one word on, on or one line on what SuperWorld is, but then I'll go into, you know, my presentation and, and talk through the things um, that were just mentioned about, you know, how we got through the idea, kind of what the idea is, and then kind of go through kind of um, in a few uh, very direct steps, kind of how we started building. Um, you know, just as a high level, SuperWorld is a virtual world mapped on top of the real world where anyone can create, discover, and monetize anything around us in augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. So, you know, again, create anything anywhere. Uh, and then again, the opportunity to, to own the world, own those locations uh, in and around the world. Um, with that being said, let me go and uh, share my presentation and um, I'll walk you through a little bit more about um, you know what we're what we're doing at Superworld. So maybe second. let's see a round of hands if the class has already uh, heard of uh, Superworld. I might be curious to to see who has who had already heard of Superworld or maybe accessed or bought some NFTs there. Anybody? Still early on. Still early. <laughs> Good. Well, that's good. It uh, means that there's a huge market still. There is. There is. There is <laughs> people in the in the space um, who who uh, will you know. I'm happy to introduce what we're doing to you guys. So this is great. Um, let me uh, let me share my screen. And uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, yeah. great. Great. Um, <clears throat> so first I'm going to start with, you know, um, just right off the bat, you know, how we recognize the opportunity. But I think it um, is important to um, just, first of all, understand, you know, kind of who, who we are. Um, so uh, my co-founder and I, uh, my co-founder name is Max Woon. Uh, Max and I um, both previously worked uh, on the YouTube platform, um, and that's where we met. Um, but I'll, I'll give you my background, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about Max. And I do this to give you an understanding of, you know, how we arrived at um, the specific problem that we're going to solve. Um, so my background, just so you know it, is... Again, I, I went to undergrad at Rice University, grad school in Illinois. Um, I started off my career in, in management consulting, uh, moved to, to work in, at, in Wall Street um, in investment banking. I was at UBS and HSBC in New York. Um, of all things, I started off in real estate investment banking. Uh, so, you know, it's funny because, you know, in life, as I think Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dots going forward, only backwards. And you know, you'll soon learn that we've started a virtual real estate marketplace, as I said. And so, you know, early in my career, I started off in the traditional real estate investment banking world. Um, and then, uh, you know, did did corporate finance, public finance and M&A. And then I got into venture capital in New York, uh, investing across tech and biotech. Uh, after that, I was an early team member, uh, first biz dev at TopTal, um, which is a talent marketplace backed by Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, forgot to mention in between uh, TopTal and my VC time in New York, I also uh, started a couple of venture capital funds in Europe, uh, one in Ukraine, and also I'm on the board of one in Belarus. Um, so, you know, kind of came from the VC space and then moved over uh, to TopTal and was early, um, you know, employee at a, at a fast growing startup where I learned a lot about how to scale and be experimental and, you know, learned how to, um, again, you know, help grow a rocket ship. So it was a very valuable experience. And then about six years ago, I started Rogue Initiative Studios, which is a film, television, gaming, and virtual reality studio in Hollywood. My co-founder produced Call of Duty, Modern Warfare series, and Ghosts. And my production partner is Michael Bay, the action director, who's known for Transformers, The Island, Armageddon, Pearl Harbor. And so at Rogue Initiative, what we do is we, we build new franchises from the ground up feature film, television, gaming, virtual reality, all the way to amusement park rides and toys. And so that was our, you know, I come from the AR, VR space. Um, and, um, you know, Max and I, as I said, 
we met on YouTube before I started Rogue Initiative. And Max's background is Max did Xfire, which is a gaming messaging platform and sold that to Viacom. But he's also done Fizzle, Sliver, Skit, and Toonstar, all venture-backed companies. Sliver and Toonstar are both in the immersive space. So he comes from the immersive space as well. And then previously he worked in Stephen Hawking's department at Cambridge. So super smart guy. Um, we'd gotten together and, um, you know, we again had this immersive background and experience. And, you know, what happened was, um, you know, a, a few different things. But what, what was the main thing that happened was Pokemon Go had come out. Um, this was, uh, you know, 2016. And, you know, it became this worldwide sensation. And um, as you know, um, as you likely know, it was it was actually one of the fastest companies in history to hit a billion dollars in revenue. And a lot of people don't know, but Niantic is doing extremely well and, you know, they, they've continued to do really well. But let me go through the backdrop of what was happening during this time period. And this kind of goes to to answer the question of, you know, how did we kind of come to this idea of starting Superworld? So the backdrop is, you know, what was happening in the space was AR content creation um, was was really starting to grow fast. Um, so there was a launch of AR SDKs by Apple and Amazon and Snap. Google came a little bit later in 2018 and Facebook with Instagram had already been doing face filters. Uh, coincidentally, I was uh, I told you I had started a, a venture capital fund in Belarus. Well, the company that does all of the face filters for Instagram and Facebook went through the, that firm and got acquired by uh, by Facebook. So I'd gotten early exposure. That company is called Masquerade, MSQRD. And so, you know, the backdrop is here is that there was a lot of stuff happening in AR um ar was getting very exciting there was a lot of mobile phones out there that were ar ca capable even in 2017 um and you know the ar cloud was coming fast so people were definitely investing a lot of resources into ar cloud apple you know google epic unity they were all building these ar frameworks and then we also realized that, you know, we'd come from the immersive space. And, and so we realized that, you know, in terms of trends, um, VR was still um, a little bit of a hard industry to break into because there weren't that many VR headsets around back then. And there's still, I wouldn't say, are that many VR headsets out. You know, Oculus Quest in the market really kind of helped make that um, a, just a more viable platform to build on. But at that point, you know, back in 2016, 2017, you know, it was literally in the single double digit kind of millions number of, of headsets, probably double digits at that point. But, um, but we realized AR was different because there were, you know, billions of mobile phones out there that were AR capable. Um, AR kit had just come out in Apple, as I said, so they were trying to push AR development. Web AR existed and AR glasses uh, were coming. They've always been coming. And it's funny because even back then they were coming soon. So um, we're now that we're, you know, in 2022, I think we're finally at that point. But we've been saying this for a while. But even back then, it was exciting that they were coming. Um, spatial computing um, was also coming in the sense of, um, you know, we knew that hardware was coming out um, that was going to enable uh, depth sensing. Uh, with LiDAR. We knew 5G was coming, um, you know, probably a few years away, but we knew that bandwidth um, on and mobile superior cellular connectivity was coming. So, you know, we could see that these were trends that were really inflection points that were going to change the game. Um, we also looked at the market, um, you know, and we'd, we'd come from the industry. So we'd, we'd had the opportunity to to look at the market and understand the market. And we knew that it was going to be huge, especially, you know, in the fact that you could put content in real world locations. We saw how quickly Pokemon Go had reached a billion dollars and how quickly they were generating revenue. And we, we realized that there was a potential to create anything, even, you know, if you wanted to create something in fashion or music or art or entertainment or education, the potential was there. 
And so we, we really did some analysis and understanding of the market and the market size, which was really important to really understanding what, what differentiated, you know, what we were thinking of doing versus, you know, the difficulties maybe that we had, um, you know, in the VR space um, or the difficulties even developers in general were having there at that time. Um, and then, you know, again, um, blockchain was still, um, you know, as it relates to NFTs and digital assets was still very early. Um, but we, we knew that there were um, some very big limitations that existed in the way that uh, more centralized solutions um, were solving um, the problems and also engaging with their customers. And, you know, um, th the Farmville story ended up happening uh, a couple of years later, but we had already seen this with other virtual worlds that, you know, as those virtual worlds lose prop uh, popularity, that all of their game assets are lost. You know, these worlds being totally virtual sometimes can lose their relevance and the users are participating there aren't really completely participating in all of the economics that are happening there in a centralized structure. So we realized that, you know, if we could improve this, we needed to use blockchain. We needed to use this new technology and bring it together with what we knew, which was AR and VR. Um, and blockchain could solve a lot of these problems. So we really kind of, you know, thought about the problem and solution at that stage and, and realized that we needed to, to work in Web3 to really provide a very powerful solution um, to enabling people to not only create, discover content around them like Pokemon Go, but also have you know, participation and ownership of that content and actually ownership of those spaces. So that was how we actually kind of thought through that problem and solution. Um, again, we all know this, um, it being that you're in this class, but, you know, blockchain really solves a lot of things that are very specific for virtual world economies. So, you know, innovation, integrity, transparency, secure ownership and property rights. You know, really, if you're building an economy, a virtual world economy, you want to have that economy, you know, provide ownership and alignment for users. And so we really realized that that was integral. Um, for what we wanted to create. So, you know, we, we, we kind of, as I said, knew the market. We knew we wanted to create a platform. Um, we saw Pokemon Go. Um, we, you know, knew we wanted to do AR. But we also realized that, you know, we didn't want to do a game. Like, we didn't want to do just one game. We wanted to, do, to create a platform where anyone could create anything, regardless of what they loved. Um, and so that was kind of the basis of, of, of starting Superworld is if we couldn't build the, the, the next Pokemon Go, what if we could build a place, a place where the next thousand Pokemon Go's gets built onto it, right? And that was kind of the high level vision. And I'm using Pokemon Go as an analogy for adding digital information to the real world. So what is Superworld? I'll go into the, the, the idea so you understand what it is that we kind of came up with. And maybe, Hirish, just real quick, right? Because um, yeah. first of all, <clears throat> I think you're now starting the what is the company you're working on, right? And and yes. and class, if you assess what Hirish just, just, re just broke down, right? Yeah. It's almost yeah. if he had attended really also class or one, class or two, because he did the first time macro assessment, right? What technology is changing? What behaviors are changing? What are the things that are happening on the market that we can assess and recognize a pattern, right? You, you saw the structure that he had, right? And then one sentence that he just said, now, now before he started, let me introduce Super Bowl was, what if? So the sentence, what if, actually invokes and provokes our mind, right, to really think freely based on initial assessment that he, that he broke down. So there is a... There is an experience that comes. So what I do I bring to the table? 
then what am I assessing from a market? And then let's be creative. What if? And uh, sorry, I didn't mind to interrupt you. Now, how can I get to Super Bowl? Right? No, that's great. No, no, please. If there, you know, definitely see this as a discussion. So if there's any points that you want to interject, please feel free. And you know, again, if there's anyone else in the class who has questions while I'm, I'm talking about stuff, please ask. Um, definitely see this as a discussion. Um, so, you know, even back then, you know, that what if, um, as you mentioned, was was a very important um, part of, of of how we ideated on this, which was, you know, what if it could be anything? What if it, it could be, you know, you know what what you want to do in terms of travel or music or entertainment or education? And so we really we, we realized very early that we wanted to create a platform and not a specific game or a specific um, type of genre, but literally kind of be as expansive as possible. And so SuperWorld is a social platform that allows anyone to create, discover, monetize, and own their world around them. So in the real world, so we're all in SuperWorld right now. There's an infinite number of filters on the world. So I have a world, you have a world, brands have worlds. Our big vision for Superworld is that Superworld interfaces with all aspects of our life, online and offline. And our mission of Superworld is, you know, how do we empower people? And so we're, we're, we're creating a concept called live to earn, not play to earn, but live to earn. How do you take these things in real life and add tokenomics to them, bring virtual real estate to the real world that you can own. And then again, the broader mission is how do we take all this user activity and build a better world? And that's why it's called super world is it's the world that you would, you know, have if you could build a world of your own, what is your ideal world? And how does that interface with the physical world, the real world around us? Um, so again, I'll just go into kind of a little bit more detail on what, what it is and what we were thinking back then as well. Um, you know, we started building on mobile, which I'll get to in a bit, but, um, you know, we, we thought the mobile app will allow people to, to, to see content around them, place content in locations. Um, we kind of started early. I, I was describing how AR kit launched in, you know, mid 2017 in September. And we started SuperWorld in early 2017. So we, we had this idea even before. AR kit actually launched. Like we knew that Apple was getting into the space of AR. And so they really made it a lot easier for us when AR kit came out to develop. Um, so that was the mobile part of what we were doing. Um, and then we also, um, you know, we're looking at how could we um, build real estate in SuperWorld that enables ownership. Um, Sometime in 2017, you know, Decentraland had launched and they started uh, selling virtual land in a totally virtual environment. And we were looking and assessing technologies there. Um, and we, we, we you know, kind of um, really understood that NFT technology was the way that we wanted to go with virtual land and super world. So we didn't do an ICO approach and decided to instead to do NFTs. And then again, the other part of the vision is that it was expansive. So it wasn't just consumer gaming or social or education, but it could also be enterprise. And so uh, again, we start off with a very expansive vision. Um, again, to just go into more detail on what we built um, is, you know, again, there's 64.8 billion plots of land. Each plot is a city block covering the surface of the earth. And if you buy a block, you get a share of all the economics, advertising, e-commerce, digital commerce, data, analytics, and gaming. Each block is on Ethereum, so it's an ERC-721 token. And when you buy a block, as I said, you become a stakeholder on the platform. And anyone can put anything anywhere. You don't control the blocks of land that you, you've bought. Anyone can put content in there. It'll go in one of the infinite number of filters there, in my world, your world you know, any of the brands, worlds, anyone's world. So um, it really makes it open for anyone to create. Um, and then, you know, again, the second part of what we're doing is, um, you know, enabling creation. So, you know, you can, again, utilize the mobile application. You can use utilize the desktop to add content. So you can upload content from external sources. And we're also building a lot of tools 
for you to build content of your own, either straight to your camera roll, upload it into the into the browser, um, or you know even 3D VR WebGL. So again, we want to make any type of content creation available, and then we also want to enable discovery of all sorts. So I'm going to go through kind of on a high level, and we can go into more depth as well on how did we start. You know, what were the steps to start all this? So I started off this presentation by telling you about the trends, what was happening in the space, what we knew because we came from the immersive space. You know, AR was definitely the way to go, not VR at that point. We knew that software was coming out. We knew that Pokemon Go proved that people would find, you know, real world experiences compelling. I came from, from Hollywood understood that cross-platform content was the way of the future, that you could create content in an engine, put that in a movie, or put that into an interactive game or in an immersive game. And you could put all of that in the real world, right? And, you know, my co-founder as well came from the gaming space and the immersive space. So we really, you know, kind of kind of had a lot of things that we had, you know, as ideas. But, you know, I would say that the first thing, and I come from, you know, the business world. And so, you know, the first thing I did, and I would recommend anyone to do is to, you know, again, write and put all of those ideas in a place where you can really organize, um, you know, each piece of that on the business side, what is the idea that you're really going after here? And, you know, the business model canvas is a great framework for that. Um, this is uh, something I recommend to you know any startup entrepreneur to to think about and do um, initially when they are um, thinking through an idea, so they can understand all the mechanics of the idea, the key partners, the key activities they want to do. You know what is their value proposition? What are the customer relationships? How do those look? How is the customer segments look? The channels, revenue streams. So you know there's a lot of things here that you really need to think through. So at least you have an idea and you might not know all the answers, right? Cause you're just ideating at first, but this is gonna make you kind of go through the exercise of actually thinking about what are some of those answers and what are some of those things that um, you should really think through in terms of what you're building. Um, you you, you want to make sure as you're, you know, thinking through your idea, you're covering all the bases. And this business model canvas is a really great framework to think through what all those bases are. Um, so you can, um, again, uh, diligently approach um, the idea that you're, you know, pursuing in a way that, again, is holistic and not just um, you know, focused on one aspect of the go to market strategy, for example, versus uh, or just looking at, you know, what kind of features you want an MVP. But this is kind of giving you that very holistic, um, you know, uh, kind of full circle way of, of evaluating whether this idea makes sense. I would I would build this out and then I would show it to people, you know, show it to people that maybe are in the space, people that are interacting um, in different parts of this space. Um, you really need to understand whether there is demand for your idea from, you know, the key players here, customers, channels, custom, you know, other segments, revenue streams. You want to make sure that you're, you know, actually operating um, in a in reality. Um, there's another, um, you know, Mike Maples, um, who's a great VC, has this, um, you know, really great framework called backcasting, which I also recommend. Um, but I think the backcasting framework is about, you know, grounding yourself in reality and then also looking into the future um, and, and then kind of going back from the future to the present day. And this kind of business model canvas can really help you get there. Um, number two, I, I recommend, you know, as a second step is, again, um, you know, you need to build an MVP. Hi, Harish. Sorry, we have one yeah. question in the class that um, Please. we Please. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hey, Harish, thanks for uh, coming and speaking with us. Uh, earlier you mentioned um, not choosing to do an ICO. Um, I think it kind of, uh, with that business model canvas, kind of made me think of it again in terms of funding. So I look at the ICO as a good funding model. 
Um, how did you guys think of funding for uh, for SuperWorld outside of that? Yeah, no, that's a good good question. So, you know, um, the ICO uh, model um, in terms of uh, fundraising was very successful in uh, 2017. And, and so it was very, um, I would say, uh, you know, um, very interesting uh, in terms of uh, an opportunity for us to go that direction. Um, the reason we didn't go that direction um, is, you know, there, there was a lot of, um, uh, you know, I'd say uh, kind of uh, kind of very nebulous as to, um, you know, what, what was happening there with, with that structure and, you know, with the SCC um, and, you know, other, um, you know, other, other kinds of uh, companies that were just kind of, you know, doing ICOs all over the place in the space. And, you know, we kind of came to the conclusion um, that we wanted to wait and kind of see how that plays out. Um, as opposed to kind of, you know, kind of taking our, 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 our company and organization and capital structure and going um, to, to tokenize um, at that point in time. Now, we could have done that. Um, and, you know, I guess looking historically, there are companies like Decentraland that have, you know, again, you know, launched around then in an ICO and have done really well. So nothing, you know, again, it, it, there wasn't, it wasn't a black and white kind of thing, but for us at that stage, we just realized that, you know, it might make more sense for us to kind of stay with a more classical approach. And, you know, we, we, um, you know, raised a bit of uh, equity, equity financing from angels at that point, and we were just kind of doing a lot of experiments. So we also didn't go out and do a huge fundraise, um, which also would have been a mistake, um, I think, because the market was still very early. And, you know, had we gone out and raised um, a lot of money, and there were companies in the AR space that were doing that about then, um, and some of them aren't around anymore. Um, and so we went with what's what we call the cockroach strategy, which is, you know, let's um, let's just survive, not take much capital um, and kind of, you know, kind of experiment. And, and so that's kind of what we did um, for a while. Um, but that, you know, again, um, we are launching a token um, in the next, you know, four or five months. Um, and, you know, we're, we're you know, again, we've uh, you know, I think the industry's come a long way and there's uh, a variety of different you know, structures there that and investors and, you know, a lot more momentum there that I think makes us feel a lot better um, and a lot, a lot more legal precedence um, now. Um, so, uh, you know, but that was the circumstances back then where we made those decisions. Does that answer your question or is there something I missed? Are you were muted? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. okay. Nice. Cool. So, you know, to go to go on um, with these steps to the MVP, you know, this is a really great graphic because I think it walks through some of the stuff that we've already talked about, um, and it kind of gets to you know building the MVP itself. Um, so again, you know, the first step was the starting with the market research. Um, which some of that we did just intuitively because we'd come, we'd both come from the market. We'd come from the AR VR market. So we knew that space. Um, we had to learn, you know, a little bit about web three as well, because, you know, that was just uh, some of those opportunities were just becoming available. Um, you know, uh, vis -a -vis what we just talked about with ICOs. Um, so we had to understand, you know, what were the possibilities and what, what kind of routes we wanted to take there. Um, and also the size of the market, you know, what was available on the software side, the developer side, um, to enable us to execute on the idea. Like I explained to you, when we first had this idea, AR Kit wasn't even out, right? Like there was something else called Vaphoria, um, which is out as well, but th that was out and we were thinking about that. Um, um, but we, we, we understood the market and then, you know, around that time we decided, okay, we're going to build on AR Kit. 
Um, and, you know, we ideated on what we were going to build, what kind of an MVP would be. Um, we, we did some mapping of the user flow. Again, uh, small team. So, you know, kind of slowly building some stuff out. Um, we, we came up with a set of features, which was, you know, how do we get stuff from your camera roll into locations? Um, how do you make that discoverable? And that was pretty much it. I'm literally just adding things from the camera roll into locations. Um, and we launched, we launched like right when AR kit came out, we were like one of the first apps on AR kit. Um, you know, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was very early, um, for the software. It was early, uh, as we were one of the first on AR kit. Um, but we were there to learn and, uh, you know, that goes to number six, which is, you know, build, measure, and learn. Because that's what we kept doing. Um, and I don't think that that process really stops. Um, but that we got to that process pretty quick. So my co-founder is a CTO. Um, so he and I, you know, I kind of took the business side. He built the, the, the preliminary MVP. Um, we had a couple of other people join to help. And um, we, we launched that. And then it was, you know, this cycle of build, measure, learn, build, measure, learn. And, um, you know, uh, I, like I said, I think that process still continues with every new product or every new MVP we launch. But this is it. This was the steps right there is learn about the market, figure it out, do market research, come up with a hypothesis, map out what the user flow is. And then, you know, prioritize the features and then launch. And we're doing that still. We do that literally, you know, every time we launch a product, it, it's going to start with an MVP. Now, yeah, yeah. You would say something. Yeah, I wanted to say that obviously afterwards, there's right, things look uh, always way, way more streamlined and clearer, right? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really curious to ask uh, the question at this stage and maybe uh, you know opening up also slowly with for the class to start uh, uh, collecting some questions but you know the class part now it is, it is still at the beginning and saying i think i have an idea right let me ask you something here like a, a candid candid transparently uh, um, storytelling from your side what was the initial idea like the very first idea you and your party right sitting where right what was the initial idea and, and how did it basically change over time so that we can convey the class you know that actually it's not about the first idea but it's a you know an ongoing revisioning and assessing and and maturing of ideas right yeah you know you know it's 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 interesting it's totally true that you you know kind of slowly adapt the ideas and actually this is related to the slide that i have up right now is you know as you kind of come up with this idea um and our first idea was you know we can't build the next pokemon go let's build a place where anyone can build anything right anything anywhere that was kind of the idea how do you use ar to enable anyone to place things around you and you know this last step was really about talking to people you know talking to customers talking to investors talking to partners talking to technologists you know going through you know creating a deck doing financial models like doing all these things that helped us kind of understand was the idea that we initially thought of the right one or should we add things to it did we tell the story a little bit differently should we um again add people onto the team to, to enable us to do other things um so it was a very iterative process and this is what this slide is about this slide is exactly what you just said which is you know how does that idea change when you get it out there in real life in you know in this in, in nature and and see how it evolves do, do investor I mean, investor conversations are a great way to understand whether you're on the right path you know do investors like what you're saying and you know a lot of them are, are pretty smart about the market so some of them can give you insights that maybe you don't know um, others might be totally wrong so you can't take their advice um, you know uh, wholeheartedly I mean it's so funny because when we started Superworld back in 2017 a lot of the things we were talking about nfts and ar vr and blockchain and you know essentially the metaverse has now become super popular but back then people were like 
you know, it didn't make sense to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to take everything with a grain of salt, but this yeah. is, this is a stage where you learn. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, so. Yeah. Questions from the, from the class. Any, any yeah. Questions? We have one more question. Yeah. Um, and that gets me to the end. So I, I, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks. This is a really uh, interesting, important subject. This kind of geospatialized NFTs. Um, I'm wondering, does it go beyond uh, just you know real estate, but unoccupiable real estate? And thinking like about how when I buy, if I buy property in the physical world, you know I can occupy it or do something with it. And I'm wondering, like, is there in the super world, uh, how does it kind of, um, you know, is it just like, is it just uh, just the financial model that builds on itself? Or do you see it developing into something like, you know, uh, risk associated with places? Uh, does it have, does it have traction in on the ground is what I mean? Like, um, is it like a, a monetized Instagram, but where does it hit the ground? Yeah. So again, Superworld covers the surface of the Earth. So every location on Earth is part of Superworld. And you know, as you um, are able to buy those locations, now you become a key stakeholder on the platform. And again, um, we are adding data to the virtual land that corresponds to physical land pricing dynamic information. And so as things change in the physical world, the virtual world corresponding will also change. Also along with what's happening in the virtual side of what's happening in the world. And so there's a very strong connection between the physical land and the virtual land world. Ultimately, they will become one. When you think of life, you'll you know, think of these virtual layers corresponding to your physical life and the physical things you're doing in the physical world. And then additionally, the way we're thinking about Superworld is it's all about real world utility. So a lot of the virtual things that we're bringing. So as an example, we did an NFT, uh, you know, just this week, actually, and we did it oh, even a month or two ago again which was, you know, you buy an NFT and you get access to a, a, a luxury club in New York and Miami called Custom House. We did a 3D yacht at the Monaco Yacht Show. You can buy a 3D yacht NFT that gives you access to the Monaco Yacht Show. So, you know, the idea is that, you know, how do you add virtuality to real life? And how do you take real life and get benefits virtually from doing things in your real life um, as well? So we want to bring both of those things together. And that's a big part of what we're doing. Let's take one more question and then I uh, want to be yeah. respectful also of so we have uh, 10 fantastic mentors in line, uh, 10 of them. So there is a next session. And one more question, class. Yes. If Mana could help me, please. Yeah, we have one more question. Thank you so much, Mana. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, I'm just curious if you could speak to how you thought about pricing, um, both the plots of land and also just generally the business model um, as people buy and sell land. Um, seems like just selling the land at the moment, you're going to make a lot of money off of the 64 billion lots of land for about 300 bucks. But curious how you landed on that price, um, and if there's any other revenue streams beyond that. Yeah, so again, um, land is one way that you can participate in Superworld. Um, buying land unpurchased is 0.1 ether. So, um, you know, 300 bucks today. Um, but once you bought a, one, one of those NFTs, you can reprice it to whatever you want. And so on the secondary market, you know, if you bought something popular that you think is worth more, let's say someplace on Berkeley campus, you know, you buy it for 300 bucks, but now you can reprice it to whatever you want. And you have to assume that maybe someone else wants it at that price because there's only one of those plots, right? And so that's how the land works. And then we're, again, uh, incorporating a lot of monetization mechanisms. So when you own the land, um, you're gonna be able to earn income. So potentially from yield, from decentralized finance mechanisms, from content creation, content monetization, 
from gaming, from advertising, from digital commerce, e-commerce. So owning the land, again, gives you that access. Um, but in terms of how we kind of came at that number, we really want it to be accessible to everyone. And so that was a really important thing is if, you know, again, uh, everything is 0.1 Ether. And so you go out, you buy a plot that you like, and you can price it to whatever you think it's worth. We take a transaction fee on the secondary market, but we want our landowners to be able to benefit and also price the land accordingly. So we wanted to kind of give um, the, the landowners the ability for that pricing. And we wanted to really, um, again, prioritize um, accessibility by anyone in the world. You're getting a city block of land for 300 bucks, still really good pricing. Um, but then in the future, we're going to fractionalize that, you know, so you can you can divide up your land. There's a lot of things that are coming um, that and utilizing decentralized finance to really make it a sophisticated real estate marketplace. But then again, on top of that, you can create NFTs. You can do all kinds of things in Superworld that impacts the land. Either you own or someone else owns. Very insightful, um, amazing story. I know, guys, we could uh, talk for hours, uh, but uh, I want to let the Hirish go. Guys, make some noise. This was amazing, right? Thank you so much. Very inspiring. Hirish, all the best. Please keep us uh, posted on your token. We want to jump in early, right? And uh, and with that, you know, let you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, yes. I want to kick off things and uh, get into class, uh, into our second session, our second phase of, uh, of our um, mentorship journey for today. We go now from an inspiration and from a real life story from a current startup out on the market where we heard exactly when they started, how they uh, started, how the team formation was. Um, we give you now access uh, to uh, 10 handpicked, very renowned, um, peers, mentors in the space of uh, blockchain um, that um, I've been having the privilege to engage and one, of, one or the other known better over the last years. Uh, we have um, 10 of them because we have 10 teams here. So I would like to break down the logistics on, on, on how is uh, the online mentoring going to work, right? Thanks to this tool, as soon as we pause this live session, we are going to have a launch. In this launch, we're going to have the 10 tables. Every table has your startup name, or for those who don't have the startup name, you definitely put a, um, a tag or a placeholder there, right? I would like, please, to encourage the students to meet all there and uh, the um, mentors are invited to join you at the tables. So the mentors will ask, well, Tomaso, who should I join exactly? Let me share here real quick the screen so that we go through this logistical part of things. Share a specific Chrome tab. Share. You should be now able to see yep, the screen. So dear mentors, you have here the names of the mentors. So I can, in a team one, which is table one, the team called Block SME has the pleasure to work with Lior. Team two, table two, Sesame has the pleasure to work with Matthew Gullet. Team three, sustainability. Also right now, sustainability as a placeholder, as, as the name, startup name. Pleasure to work with Jose Rocani. Insider works with Anand Lyre. Fake Real News with Matt Taylor. Team Healthcare with Citadel. Hi, Citadel. Thanks for joining again. Alina. Hi, Alina. Dream Squad with Alina. Uh, team education, I think it's the table, should be table eight called education, with even Miyazono. I hope I didn't butcher your name, sorry. Thank you, even for joining. Clutch Gigi, Linda Young, and Joe. Hi, Joe. Mona Lizard. This is table 10. Now, 
the way that I would like to structure this first mentoring session, please, is uh, that uh, we have an exchange, let's say 15 minutes and 50 minutes. So 15 minutes, the startup, the project, will be presenting the very last assignment, which is an assignment of double-clicking on the hypothesis of why do you think your idea is an idea? What is the persona? Um, what evidences to do, do you have? To whom did you talk? Uh, what numbers can you bring to the table? So really an assessment of why you think that the idea is an opportunity. And this should be, double, should be um, assessed by providing detailed information and not a general thoughts, right? Also, one of the, uh, of the highlights of this, of this uh, um, homework was uh, to describe how the business or how the problem is solved today. What are the competitors? What are services that they're using in order to solve that, right? And then you, dear um, teams, will have the chance to engage and ask basically questions, right? And then we should meet. We have 30 minutes. We should be meeting here roughly uh, at, at eight uh, in order just to have the, the final assignment for next uh, class. And with that, I would like to pause the main session here and I will be going through the tables and uh, enjoy. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. See you soon. I assume that most of you might be thinking right now, Tommaso, now that it got ju juicy and it got, became interesting, right? And it's, uh, it's uh, now really uh, getting value out of the conversation. We have to drop out. Well, we had only, assessed, we had only set up 30 minutes and, uh, and I would like to be respectful of everybody, uh, everybody's time, especially um, the mentors. Mentors, I know how precious the time is, your time is. I know how busy you are. And I know that uh, that we do this for the students. We're giving back here to the students. That's the reason why I would like here officially to thank you very much, every single one of you. I was actually checking if I can invite every single one of you here on the screen, on stage, but I can't. There is a, there is a limitation. That's the reason why I would like to do it one to many. And obviously, I will be following up. Um, dear class, how did you like the mentoring? Make some noise here on the on the on the on the chats. Who liked the, the mentoring? Thumbs up, thumb down. Was it was it of value? I can see already a couple of uh, emojis. Yeah, love it. Okay, thank you so much, Julian. Very valuable. Thank you, Alexander, Armand. Thank you so much. That's insane. Okay, cool. So as a next step, I'll be sharing with one hand the projects and the startups some feedback forms and on the other hand with the mentors also some feedback forms pretty confident that the one or the other I, I i tried to move from one table to the other um you guys were exchanging also contacts so that's real life right that's what happens right the value is created you exchange uh, business contacts and you keep on having a um, ongoing relationship again with that i would like to thank you Please, dear class, check Slack. I will be sharing with you some forms. And dear Mento, another big round of applause. Thank you so much. i really humble that you guys joined. And I'll see you next time here to help and meet you in the metaverse. Bye-bye.